Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, K Street lobbyist, and host of Behind the Curtain, Saturday mornings at 10 on Newsmax TV. Also, Virginia Democratic Delegate Mark Levine. Catch his nationally syndicated radio show, Inside Scoop, weekdays at 3 p.m. on MarkLevineTalk.com. This week, ISIS claimed responsibility for terror attacks in Brussels. The bombings killed more than 30 people and injured nearly 300 others. President Obama and other world leaders pledged their unwavering support for the Belgian people. But on the campaign trail, Republican presidential hopeful Ted Cruz seemed to suggest surveillance of Muslim neighborhoods was the answer. Obama responded like this. As far as the notion of having surveillance of neighborhoods, where Muslims are present. I just left a country that engages in that kind of neighborhood surveillance, which, by the way, the father of Senator Cruz escaped for America, the land of the free. The notion that we would start down that slippery slope makes absolutely no sense. It's contrary to who we are. Uh, and it's not going to help us defeat ISIL. Kind of a home run comment from Obama as he visited Cuba. Did Cruz make a huge error in judgment here, Mark? Oh, I think he did. I, I, the idea that we're going to surveil Muslim neighborhoods. Look, if you want to surveil ISIS, if you want to surveil people who are connected with that radical Islamic terrorist group, go right ahead. No American would have a problem with that. But this idea we're going to target people based on their religion and surveil all the many, many millions of peace-loving American Muslims, frankly, it is more like Cuba than the United well, States. Well, I, I agree in part and disagree in part. I largely agree with the substance of what the president said and what Mark said. Now, p millions and millions of peace-loving Muslims, I think we have to recognize that, that Islam in the U.S. and around the world is an increasingly radical and radicalized ideology. Here politically, though, Morris, is the big mistake that Cruz made. Substantively, I don't agree with Cruz, but politically he was very right to jump on this, on the bombing thing this week and on the Muslim issue. He got out in front of Trump. It's Trump's issue. He temporarily took it away from him. He should have stayed with it. But the big mistake Ted Cruz made was getting into using his super PACs to attack Trump's family. Yeah. He was on a winning issue, but he diverted thinking he somehow was going to hit big with the family with Melania Trump. Terrible mistake. He lost his momentum. You're right. More on that later. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Ash Carter says U.S. forces killed a senior ISIS leader. The latest successful attack as the Islamic State loses ter territory in both Iraq and Syria. We are systematically eliminating ISIL's cabinet. Indeed, the U.S. military killed several key ISIL terrorists this week, including, we believe, Haji Iman, who was an ISIL leader, senior leader, serving as a finance minister, and who also is responsible for some external affairs and plots. A critics argue President Obama has been soft on terror. It's a top issue on the campaign trail. These revelations seem to undermine that narrative, Jack. No, they do. I agree. It's a good week for the president. He's having a good week south of the border, and he's having a good week with ISIS. I'll admit that. I give credit where, where credit's due. I'll tell you, though, Morris, the biggest problem is that's about 1% of what Obama needs to do with ISIS. Is it headed in a better direction? Yes. Fundamental problem is the, pr the president could wipe out ISIS tomorrow. He's reluctant to take any civilian casualties. They don't want to do it in Syria. They don't want to do it in Lebanon. They don't want to do it in Iraq. They know what to do. ISIS is embedded tightly in civilian populations. They don't want to do what they have to do. And because of that, because of their reticence in that area, you continue to see attacks in places like Belgium. And sadly, I think you'll see them in the U.S. Jack, are you really calling for the killing of innocent civilians? I mean, they could wipe out ISIS tomorrow. As far as I understand it, people are joining ISIS precisely because civilians are being murdered, being well, massacred in Syria and Iraq by the Iranians, by, by Russia, by the Syrian government, and so forth. If you, if we join and kill more civilians, first Mark, of all, that, that's a horrible 22. idea. But, but is, second of all, more people will join. You have ISIS. to understand something. That's an old catch-22. It was the argument during Vietnam. It was the argument in Korea? It was the yeah, argument we didn't win that war either, did well, we? Jack? It's an argument in a lot of places. Here's what you have to understand about ISIS. It's like a tumor. The analogy is cancer. What do you do with a tumor? Do you attack the body with chemotherapy? Yes, it kills other cells. But you have to. You can't let the tumor grow. If the tumor grows, you're dead. So right. you have to take a chance. Let's step away from Belgium and ISIS and focus on the primary campaign here. Three states voted this week, including Arizona. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump posted big wins there. It's exciting to see that result come in because, you know, Arizona, 
like Washington, like a lot of the states that are going to be expressing their views and counting their votes in the weeks ahead, understand that this is not just a contest between different candidates. This is a contest between fundamentally different views of our country, our values, and our future. Last week right here, we pointed out that Clinton is already positioning herself for a general election matchup with Trump. Mark, what fundamentally different views is Clinton referring to here? Well, I, I think she's talking about Donald Trump. She's talking about this anti-immigrant, uh, this whole... Look, one of the interesting things that happened that very, got very little play in the media is the long lines at, outside the polls in Arizona, five hours long, and that was because the Republican Party shut down polling places in Latino neighborhoods, forcing oh, Mark, Latinos you, uh, to wait no, in line for no, five hours. This things, is fundamentally you're, you're racist the thing going on in yeah, the Republican okay. Party, we and can, she's calling them out. We can it. read innuendo on the Internet for the next five years. Let me tell you something. You want to talk well, about... Are you denying the lines? It's because of Arizona's if, new law. If Jack. you want to talk about turnout, Republican turnout is very high, and that's what has people like Mark and Hillary Clinton very afraid because Donald Trump is turning out his base. Hillary Clinton is doing a very poor job turning out her base. I'll oh, tell that's you, silly. I'll tell you what the Clintons are doing, though. She's beginning to pivot. She's done with Bernie Sanders. Mark knows this. They're beginning to turn on Obama. First Bill Clinton and now Chelsea Clinton. They're preparing to go after those swing voters. <laughs> yeah. Obama's unpopular. Right. They turn on him. You're way ahead of me because we're get to, going to get to that too, Jack. But uh -huh. the Democratic Party is not alone. A lot of Republicans are concerned about Trump's impact on their brand. For example, this week's exchange with Senator Ted Cruz. The Donald Trump-Ted Cruz feud is getting personal, with each of their wives now being drawn into the fight. She is used to dealing with bullies. And Donald Trump doesn't scare Heidi remotely. Trump calling foul, blaming Ted Cruz for a controversial Facebook ad featuring his wife, Melania. The GOP frontrunner tweeting, quote, Lion Ted Cruz just used a picture of Melania from a GQ shoot in his ad, adding this warning, quote, Be careful, Lion Ted, or I will spill the beans on your wife. The ad uses one of Melania Trump's old modeling photos from GQ magazine, showing her laying across a fur blanket on Trump's jet, wearing nothing but heels and jewelry. Superimposed over the photo, the text, quote, meet Melania Trump, your next first lady, or you can support Ted Cruz on Tuesday. The ad was aimed at Mormon voters in Utah ahead of Tuesday's caucuses and produced by an anti-Trump super PAC called Make America Awesome. People may want to see her as first lady. Imagine what the Christmas card would look like. Now, Cruz claims he had nothing to do with that ad. He won all of Utah's 40 delegates. More so-called dirty tricks or all's fair in love and politics, Jack? Well, full disclosure, as you know, I'm a Trump supporter. But I think in fairness, just looking at it objectively, Morris, I think uh, Cruz, like I said, he got off the track. He should have stayed with the Muslim attacks. Uh, when a candidate has a beautiful wife like that, the last thing you want to do is call attention to it. Because as you suggest, I think, I think Americans of all kinds, particularly Republican base voters, will just like it. And I think Cruz, Cruz simply got off the track. He was on a great track. He had preempted Trump on the Muslim issue this week. Now look at that though. Well, imagine that on the White House uh, Christmas card. People might like well, she's that. A model. She, she, she's, she's a model. She's a model. She's a model. What more can you, you know, say? The country yet, knows she's a model. Let me ask you, Mark, it's yet another piece of ammunition for voters who consider Trump to be sexist. Uh, they're both Republicans sexist. Republicans worry it will help Clinton with the female vote. Are they right about that? They are. They're both sexist. Trump and Cruz. I mean, did you see both of those tweets? You have you have Donald Trump showing a, a an unflattering picture of Ted Cruz's wife and a flattering picture of his wife. Uh, you got Ted Cruz showing Donald Trump's wife. This tells you what the Republican Party Trump is all is about. Retaliate. It's all about hating Muslims, hating women. Oh my God. We are about Why to elect okay, a woman Mark, as president of the this. United States, and this is a woman riddle who has this. dignity. Okay, riddle and me that's this. what the Republican Party lacks. Why is, is it dignity? You, riddle me this. Why is it that you and NBC News both think that showing a picture of a beautiful woman translates into hatred of women and anti-feminism? Can you what, explain that? Is there a philosophy behind that? Yes. What they're doing is they're, they're showing an image as if that's all a woman is. If that's all there is, is her beauty. And Trump well, seems to agree minute, with that. Trump, Trump seems to agree. Image. He tweets no, no, out and Trump says, oh, my wife's it. prettier than your wife. I mean, he might as well talk about the size of his hands. This is juvenile, and it, the American people aren't going to go for it. All right. Before we go, I'd like to hit one more topic. At a campaign rally for his wife in Spokane, Washington, former President Bill Clinton told the crowd, quote, we need to put the awful legacy of the past eight years behind us. 
An aide said Bill was referring to the Republican-led Congress, but Republicans call it a slam on President Obama. Who's right here, Jack? Oh, they want to paint. The, they want to slyly paint uh, Bill Clinton as though he's getting senile. He's not senile at all, and neither is Chelsea Clinton. Both of them this week launching big attacks. Uh, on Barack Obama. The reason? Obama's unpopular. Swing voters don't like him. Swing voters don't like health care. They're starting to attack Obama more. So they're oh, going to attack health care. Hillary Clinton has begun her pivot. She's done with Bernie Sanders. She's effectively done with the Democratic Party. She may never need them again. Now she's going to focus on, now she'll focus on swing voters. Jack, she's the, racing the to the center. Mark, what about Bill Clinton saying these awful past eight years? Well, I mean, they have been awful. To? I mean, you have Republicans for the first time no. in all of American history taking a Supreme Court nominee and saying we won't consider oh you. Oh my God. That's never happened I'm in sure 240 years. Meant, they basically sure could, they should just meant. burn the Constitution because they don't follow it. They don't agree with it. They've shut down the government, what, twice, three times? I've lost count. Obama did. They did. Let's make an early prediction. This is what Bill Clinton's complaining Jack, about. Jack, as much as you like uh, Donald Trump, you think he's going to get the nomination. Mark, we know where you're coming from on the Democratic side. One last round here. Who's going to become the next president, Mark? Hillary Rodham Clinton will be the next president of the United States. I said it a year ago. I continue today. Jack? Oh, I agree. Looking at it objectively, Mark, or Morris, in all seriousness, there's probably 75% chance Hillary's elected. That's where the London line is. All right. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic lawmaker. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Mars. Thanks, Mark.